Math 43, welcome to chapter 12. I know we're going a little bit out of order. We just finished chapter three, but we're gonna scooch over to chapter 12 and then we will come back to chapter four. So we're gonna take a little side trip. We're gonna learn about linear regression and correlation in this chapter. You might be familiar with this vocab term correlation. There's a popular enough phrase out in the real world where we say correlation is not causation. And we're gonna talk about correlation in chapter 12. We actually have talked about causation before. We brought that up in chapter one, where we talked about the only way to determine a causal relationship in the statistics world is to run an experiment, okay? So an experiment, you got the explanatory and the response variable, and you can determine a cause and effect relationship. And we're gonna talk about how two variables can be correlated in this chapter, but not necessarily causal. And when you hear this term regression, it sounds fancy and it kind of is, but it's this overarching idea of taking data and making a stat plot, all right? So we're gonna graph a bunch of data on a graph and we're just gonna see what that shape, what that pattern looks like. So there'll be times when we graph a bunch of ordered pairs, a bunch of X and Y coordinates, and it looks like a line. Great, we're gonna call that linear regression. There's gonna be a bunch of times when we graph data and it looks like a U. If you remember your U graphs from your math class, those are called parab parabolas. Great. And for every type of math function you may have learned about in your math classes, there's a regression for it. So we could have linear regression, quadratic regression, cubic, exponential, logarithmic, sinusoidal, logistic. And if those terms are unfamiliar to you, don't, don't stress too much. I wanna be clear that in, in this class, we're only gonna do linear regression. So we're not gonna move much beyond lines. I'll just give you a preview of where you could go, but we're gonna stick with linear regression. And I still want you to hear that it can move beyond that. Regression is a huge topic in stats. And basically what it's doing is it's taking past data, making a graph, looking for a pattern, and if it's a line, which it will be for this class, if it's a line, making predictions with it. So when we talk about linear regression, we're just taking past data and predicting a little bit into the future with it. So by the end of this chapter, we should be able to discuss the basic ideas of linear regression and correlation. We're gonna interpret and we'll create and interpret a line of best fit. We're gonna calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient and we're gonna calculate and interpret outliers. And outliers have a slightly different meaning than they did in chapter two. And, and we'll talk about that slightly different meaning at the end of this chapter, okay? So we're gonna now look at scatter plots. This is uh, the next type of stat plot that we're gonna consider. We have at this point looked at three stat plots. We've looked at the histogram, we've looked at the box plot and the modified box plot. So we're gonna add on to that a scatter plot. But before we get to scatter plots, we need to talk about bivariate data sets. Bivariate data sets, consists of measurements or observations on two variables. We'll usually call them X and Y, okay? Inside chapter 12, we will only look at bivariate numerical data, okay? Um, and when we get to chapter 11, which will be farther on down the line because we're going out of order, we'll look at bivariate categorical data, all right? So we're gonna stick on the numerical side and the most important graph based on bivariate numerical data is called a scatter plot. So that's what I want us to create for these first couple of examples. How do we create or construct a scatter plot inside of our calculator? And I want you to hear for chapter 12, right? We will always have two numerical variables. So that's one of the key I don't know, indicators that you're in a chapter 12 problem when you've got two variables and they're both numerical. Then you know you're gonna do a linear regression. All right. So let's read chapter one, not chapter one. Let's read through example one and see if we can identify our two numerical variables. So it says airlines have increasingly outsourced the maintenance of their planes to other companies. This has led to complaints that outsourcing creates a safety hazard due to sloppy maintenance. Government data on the percent of major maintenance outsourced and percent of flight delays blamed on the airline, often due to maintenance problems, is shown below. Make a scatter plot of the data, what can be said about the relationship. All right, so let's just try and take a step back and see what's happening. It, it might look like we have three variables, and in a sense we do. 
We have the airline, which itself is categorical. We have outsource percent, which is numerical, and delay percent, which is also numerical. So if we're just keeping track of this, we have two numerical variables. Here's one, and here's the other. So let me just take note of that right now. I have two numerical variables, One of them is outsource percent, and the other is delay percent. And what this problem is trying to kind of allude to is that perhaps outsource percent causes delay percent. So perhaps this is the explanatory variable and this is the response variable. And we're interested in figuring out hey, if outsource percent increases, meaning I increasingly outsource my maintenance, I keep hiring outside folks to perform maintenance on these planes, well, does that affect my delay percent? If this increases, does this increase? Or on the flip of that, maybe it's the other way. Maybe if outsource percent increases, delay percent decreases. We're not sure, which is why we want to look at the relationship between the two. So when it says, what can be said about the relationship? Your most baseline answer to that is you either want to tell me I have a positive relationship or I have a negative relationship. And let's talk about what each of those mean before we determine which one we have in this example. So when I use the phrase, I have a positive relationship, that means as one variable gets larger, the other variable also gets larger. In a negative relationship, it means as one variable gets larger, the other variable gets smaller. So we just have to take a look at our scatter plot, which we're gonna create in a moment, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Do I have a positive, do I have a negative relationship? So with that, I'm gonna pause for a moment and I'm gonna flip over to my computer so I can show you how to do this on our calculator. And then I'll, I'll meet back up with you and we'll officially answer, yes, it was positive or yes, it was negative. It'll be one of these two. All right, catch you in a moment. Hey Math 43, Ms. Abreu here. I wanna give you a rundown of how you can make a scatter plot on your calculator. So we've got a bunch of data here. We've got two data sets. We've got our explanatory variable, which is outsource percent. And we're trying to see if outsource percent can predict delay percent. So this is gonna be our response variable, right? But two numerical variables. So when we have two numerical variables, an X and a Y, we're gonna make a scatter plot. So let's all collectively agree, we'll put all of the explanatory variable, all of the outsource percent data into L1. We'll put all of our response variable, the delay percent, into L2. And I've already loaded into my, um, my TI emulator on my my computer. So let me go over here and just show you my data entry. Right. So you see my X variables are in L1, my Y variables are in L2. I've said this since day one, it's always a good idea to check and make sure you have the correct number of data points in there. Um, at the end of this, I'll go and I'll show you what it looks like when you don't have the same number of data points in L1 and L2. It pops back a very common error um, and I just want us to see it. Okay, so once you get your data entered into there, the next thing we always want to do is go into our stat plots. So we'll go second and y equals, okay? And if I look at where my calculator left off, it looks like I've got one plot on, two plots off. It looks like I'm making a histogram. I had a variable in L1 at some point, and I was using a frequency count of one. That's all great, but we need to change that for this problem. So let me go ahead and edit this. All right, so at this point, we've done the histogram icon. We've done the modified box plot, which is this first icon on the second row. We've done just the regular box plot, which again, we'll never use. We're, we're always gonna modify our box plots. But I'm gonna show you these first two in this example. And really, I wanna start with this first one. This is the one that you will use the most often. So we will not really use the second one. Uh, I'm just gonna show you what it, what it does, and we will not use it. So basically, these two in here, the top one in the middle row, excuse me, the middle one in the top row and the middle one in the second row, we will not use very often. 
So let's go down here and highlight or activate the scatter plot icon. That gives us a slightly different interface, and this is usually the default. So we put our X variables in L1, that's where we put outsource percent. We put our Y variables in L2, that was delay percent. And then we have this, this icon that we can choose. Let's say in drag screen, let's click off of that. Um, so here's your artistic freedom you have on your graphing calculator. You can make your little ordered pairs squares if you want. You can make them plus signs, okay? Or you can make them dots. So pick whichever little mark you want, and that's how your ordered pairs will show up. Because that's what your calculator is about to do, is just make a, a bunch of ordered pairs on one graph. So, and we call that a scatter plot. So once we get our data entered, once we set up our stat plots, it's time to look at it. So I'm gonna hit zoom nine. And there it is. Yeah, there's my scatter plot. Now, let's talk about what's happening on the x-axis and what's happening on the y-axis. So I think if I were to label this, right, if it was a midterm or I was asking you to do this by hand, what label would go down here on the x-axis? It would be outsource percent, okay? What label would go here along the y-axis? It would be delay percent, right? And both of the units in that are percentages. And you can start to see we've got this, this airline down here. It had a, a relatively low outsource percent and a relatively low delay percent. If I hit trace, I can go through my data, but you'll see the first order pair is 6614 because that was the first airline I entered. So if I wanted to figure out what what these numbers were. I just have to trace through my data hitting the right arrow key. So let's go find that first data value. There it is, 1819. So this airline had an outsource percent of 18% and a delay percent of 19%. If we go back to my original data, let's see what airline was that? Ah, it's right here, ATA, all right? That was their, their data point, so great. All right, and we can scooch through this as much as we want, but I want you to start to see the trend here. As I move my, my cursor from left to right, so as outsource percent is getting larger and larger, right? This is 18. I don't know what this next value would be. There's one at 69, right? So we see 18 to 69. It's probably getting up to 92, somewhere in there. So as outsource percent is increasing, right? What do you see as the general trend as I kind of move through those points? We kind of see this positive trend. Do we see that the Y values are also increasing? It's kind of got this curvy pattern to it. So as outsource percent increases, as I move left to right on the X axis, I think you can also see I'm moving up on the Y axis, right? So I'm basically moving right and then up. And since both of those variables are increasing, they're getting larger, right? As X increases, Y increases, we would call that a positive relationship. So when I ask the question, what can be said about the relationship, we would say something like, there's a positive relationship between outsource percent and delay percent, meaning as outsource percent increased, it looked like delay percent increased. So the more that airlines outsourced their maintenance, it looks like the more delays these airlines had. That seems to be the general trend. All right, so a couple things I just wanna show you. If we go back into our stat plots here, Okay, we have scatter plot on. I want to show you what this second icon is. This second icon is a scatter plot where we've connected the dots. So if I head down here and then I make this icon live, all right, if you hit zoom nine, it's going to be a mess because they're connecting dots. So you can see they connected them and it doesn't really help us in this case. The only time that I, I ever really connect dots and use this icon here is if I had a time series meaning time was on the x-axis, and I wanted to see the general trend over time. But this doesn't have anything to do with time, so I'm not, I'm not gonna really see a trend um, over time. That's why I, I would actually keep this back. Oops, excuse me, let me go here. I would, I would move this type back to the original scatter plot where they weren't connecting the dots. So again, this is just our, our regular scatter plot, um, but I did mention at the top of this video, I wanted to show you what would happen if you had um, one fewer data point in, in a list in like an L2 versus L1 or I should say it is the if what happens when the dimensions in L1 and L2 aren't the same so let me just go down here and delete the last 
data value I had. So what was that, 24? Okay, so let me just delete this. And I want you to take note, right? Do we see that L1 has 14 data points, but L2 only has 13? So quite literally, their dimensions are not the same, right? 14 units here, 13 units here, or 14 data values here, 13 data values here. So now when I hit zoom nine, you, you get this error, and this is a very common error. Your dimensions are mismatched. So whenever you see a dimension error, it has something to do with your lists. Um, if they're mismatched, go into your list and fix the number of observations. Um, if it says invalid dimension, it usually means you're pointing to a list that has no data in it. So let me quit out of this, and then I need to go re-enter that last data value of 24. Right? And then when I hit zoom 9, I'm good to go again. All right? Okay, so let's practice writing this up. See you in just a sec. Bye. Okay, so we're back with our stat plot, and we can see here that, again, there's this positive relationship happening where as outsource percent increases, right, as I move left to right along my x-axis, because that's what it means for the x variables to increase, then you can see this slight increase in delay percent, right? I'm also seeing my y values increase, which is delay percent. So when one variable increases and the other increases, right, up, up, we would call that a positive relationship. So let me go write that up. I would say there is a positive relationship between outsource percent and delay percent. Another way of talking about a positive relationship, it, it literally means as outsource percent gets larger, right? And I'm just gonna write an up arrow. So as this number increases, all right, then delay percent also increases. All right. So that's our most baseline classification. Is a relationship positive or negative? In this case, it was positive. Okay. Oh, I just dropped my calculator. All right, one last thing I wanted to mention. If I was gonna, if I was going to draw this by hand, I want to be clear that we would label our x-axis with outsource percent, and I would label my y-axis with delay percent. And if I wanted a better window in terms of, hey, what are these markers going by, let's just take a look on the outsource percent end. I'm going from 10 to 99, and they're making a tick mark every one unit. I'm just gonna widen that a little bit and go every 10 units. If I was labeling my x-axis, I'd probably go every 10 units. And just looking at the y values, they're going from 4 to 79, and they're making a tick mark, geez, every 0.1 units. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go every 10 units again. So I don't need a tick mark every time out. And this helps me kind of figure this out a little bit more, right? So I can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then up here would be 80. And let me remind myself, where did we start on the x's? We started around 10. So maybe this would be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I can see the tick marks just a little bit on, a little bit nicer. And when I go to graph this by hand, again, I would write outsource percent here, delay percent here, and I would probably scale my x's by 10s and scale my y's by 10s.